Hello and welcome. In my previous videos about the digitization of teaching and learning, I talked about the benefits of digitization, I introduced new digital course formats, and discussed the change of our role from teachers to educational guides. In this video, I will show where and how to start the transformation from traditional to digital teaching and learning in our subject, linguistics. As said before, in a modern teaching and learning scenario, the acquisition of the digital content is now self-guided and it takes place first. The subsequent phase of deepening takes place in class and involves a high degree of collaboration and social interaction. For such an inverted classroom format, apart from a set of classroom technologies for phase two, we need an arsenal of digital elements for phase one, such as educational videos, digital texts, literature references, images, and so on. How can we realize all that? How do we put together all these digital elements and how do we get them? Well, definitely not by just talking about them, but by doing. So, action please. The digitization of teaching and learning is possible. In fact, it has been so for several years. Most educational institutions have the necessary technical infrastructures. Our students know how to access and use the digital media. Much of the necessary digital content is available and the production tools are extremely simple to use. So why should we wait? Let's start. And to do so, I suggest a six-step roadmap as a blueprint. The idea is simple. Don't digitize a whole course. Instead, Free your in-class time by digitizing roughly 10 minutes of your traditional content and then see what you will gain. As a first step, select a course that involves a high degree of standardization that is part of the standard curriculum and is offered on a regular basis. For example, a course such as speech science, semantics, or introductory courses such as language and linguistics, which I will use as a starting point. However, the digitization of an entire course is an enormously complex enterprise that, according to my experience, keeps you busy for almost a year. For the required content units you need text material that covers several hundred pages, you need several hours of educational video material and you need images, animations, interactive quizzes, etc. In other words, too much for a quick start with immediate results. So let's reduce our goal in step two and confine ourselves to one learning unit for a start. Ideally, this should be a unit that involves a high degree of standardization and content that can be used elsewhere in your curriculum. For example, the unit Language and Linguistics, where I feel that digital media involve many advantages as compared with traditional classroom-bound methods. But even the whole unit may be too complex to be digitized in one go. Several pages of text would have to be written. You need one or two well-designed videos and maybe an interactive quiz that allows the system to randomly select from a pool of, say, 20 or more questions. So let's get down even further and confine ourselves to a part of the selected unit that covers, let's say, 10 minutes of in-class time and at the same time involves a high degree of multimedial potential. The subtopic animal communication seems highly suitable here. 
It provides us with the option of generating digital content that is superior to what you can do in class. So let's digitize that and let's now specify exactly what we need. The result of our digitization process will be a website with roughly 10 lines of written text, one or two short videos, so-called micro-lectures, maybe one or two images and, not to forget, some questions for a future quiz. To compile these digital elements there are two options. First, try to find as many as possible open educational resources, that is, material that is labeled as reusable, copyright-free and so on. If we search for animal communication and linguistics, we will find hundreds of images labeled for reuse, more than a thousand websites with written text and about 500 videos in the Creative Commons license. It is highly unlikely that there is no material good enough to be used for our purpose. However, there may be topics with no corresponding open content or the open content lacks the desired quality. In such cases we have to apply the do-it-yourself principle and generate the content on our own. In our particular case we generate a website where we mix open content with our own ideas and several access options to the content, text, video and hyperlinks leading to more details. Having digitized the content which is admittedly the most complex step on our roadmap and it will be addressed in more detail in a separate video, we now have to decide where and how to deliver the digital content. There are several options. We can use web applications that allow to create and host websites such as Weebly or WordPress. We could use an institutional learning management system if we have one, such as Moodle or Elias. Or we can even create our own platform such as the Virtual Linguistics Campus and put our website there. And for the videos? Well, that's up to you. If you want to make them available to the whole world, use, like we do, YouTube. If not, upload them to your private web environment. Well, and that's it. Almost. We have digitized roughly 10 minutes of our previous in-class time. What does that mean? Well, we could reduce in-class time and finish 10 minutes earlier. As an alternative, we could simply repeat the digital content. Or even do the opposite. Introduce new content instead. According to our experience, these options do not lead to a significant benefit. Rather, we should use the 10 minutes for individual coaching, which means for personal assistance, guided problem solving and so on. In our specific case, we could make available audio files of animal communication and discuss these with our students. Or we could confront our students with image-based animal communication data ready for analysis. And now the gain becomes obvious. More time for our students, more chances for individualization. In summary, our six steps constitute the starting point for the digitization of teaching and learning and they can now be applied repetitively, thus freeing increasingly longer periods of in-class time. However, I'm aware of the fact that step four, the digitization of the selected content, is the central and most complex task of this program. For this reason, I will focus on this step in a separate video and discuss all relevant details there. Until then, have a nice time and thanks for your attention.